This morning we released findings detailing the analysis of race-based data collected in use of force and strip search interactions. The results have confirmed what for many decades racialized communities, particularly the black and indigenous, indigenous communities, have been telling us that they are disproportionately over-policed. This data demonstrates the unfortunate realities of those experiences. As an organization, we have not done enough to ensure that every person in our city receives fair and unbiased policing. And for this, as Chief of Police, and on behalf of the service, I am sorry and I apologize unreservedly. The release of this data will cause pain for many. Your concerns have deep roots that go beyond the release of today's report. We must improve and we will do better. In 2019, through the Anti-Racism Act, the provincial government directed that all police services in Ontario begin collecting race-based data and in instances of reportable use of force. The purpose was to assess whether racial disparities exist in policing, and if so, what can be done to eliminate them. In recent years, we have been grappling with addressing and rooting out the complexities of systemic racism, as many as have many other institutions. We recognize that when a person has an encounter with the police, it can have a profound impact on their life, their mental health, and their trust in policing. It is for this reason that the Toronto Police Service must be a driving force and a leader in eliminating all forms of racial discrimination in policing and anywhere it is found. It is a reason we must engage the communities most impacted as we continue along this journey. We not only welcome community voices and insights, we recognize that it is essential to identifying ways to reduce and eliminate disparities measure and evaluate improvement, and continually look for ways to live up to the goal of equitable policing. You deserve better, and our members deserve better. The Toronto Police Service and the Toronto Police Services Board embrace this opportunity to eliminate discrimination. The Board's commitment to doing better and the policy it put in place with input from senior leaders of this organization demonstrate how governance and collaboration between the service and the board can lead to positive change. In implementing the policy, as a first measure, the service committed to collecting and analyzing data, not only in relation to incidents where officers use reportable force and the performance of their duties, but we also committed to do the same with strip searches. With the release of the initial results of this important and ongoing work, I recognize that today will be a difficult day for many within the service and within the communities we serve. It is difficult for the Toronto Police Service because our own analysis of our data, our own analysis of our data from 2020 discloses that there is systemic discrimination in our policing in these areas. That is, there is a disproportionate impact experienced by racialized people and particularly those from black communities when there, is use of for, when there is a use of force interaction with the Toronto Police Service. For example, members of the black community are 2.2 times more likely to experience an enforcement interaction with our officers. They are also 1.6 times more likely to experience force once involved in an enforcement action. My fellow command officer, Mr. Colin Stairs, will provide a more detailed account of our findings in the coming days when this information is presented to the Toronto Police Services Board on June 22nd. He is also here today, the entire team is, to field questions you may have. As challenging as it is for me as chief and for members of our command and service to come to terms with what our data tells us, I know that it will be even more difficult for those from Toronto's black communities who have been telling us for many years of their experiences. And I want our communities to know, I am listening. 
I also acknowledge the impact systemic bi bias on Indigenous communities in Toronto. We know that their specific experience and the history of policing that is so intertwined with that experience has left our organization less trusted by members of Indigenous communities. We are not seen as the true partner for community safety that we are and want to be. We know that this is a role that must be earned as part of the journey together. We are committed to achieving equitable policing for all our communities. We cannot do this alone and we must hear from you. As challenging as our findings are, this day presents an opportunity for us to be and to do better. In fact, because our legitimacy is tied to public trust, it tells us that we must be better. On behalf of my command, as the leaders of this organization, we take full responsibility. We have often heard from communities that apologies alone are not sufficient and we agree. It is also our responsibility to identify the systems and procedures that are causing or contributing to the disparate treatment of racialized people and to address it head on. We will do all we can to fix this. And some of this important work is already underway. I can report that we have already created a comprehensive system for the analysis of this data that goes beyond what has been mandated by law, that lives up to the board's requirements of us, and we are further expanding the data sets that will be subject to this analysis. Use of force and strip searches are just the start of our work. Over time, we will collect race-based data arising out of other types of interactions so that we can learn more and take the same approach to those interactions. That is, determine if there are disparities, work with our community partners to understand why, and to identify concrete actions to correct any wrongs. We have gone and will continue to go beyond our mandated scope of work out of a sincere desire to understand the extent to which systemic racism has led to differential treatment by our service. As we said in the early stage, earliest stages of this journey, we could not fix what we did not measure. I know that some could say, could, could, I'm sorry, I know that some say we could have and should have acted earlier even without the data. I assure you that we are now fully engaged and we now have a way to measure the success of our efforts to eradicate racism. I want to recognize the role of those in the black community who have been pressing for change, often with personal sacrifice. I acknowledge that their commitment and persistence has played a key role in getting us to where we are today. I can confidently say that the approach we have used reflects the best practices for race data collection. It exemplifies what communities have asked for of us and it adheres to leading practices and the anti-racism data standards. We have used careful statistical applications to achieve an advanced level of objectivity and measurability. We have invested much time and effort in this endeavor and we will continue to do so. We have laid the foundation so that we can continue to focus on ongoing reform and truly analyze what is happening, test theories on why it's happening, and then test our reforms to measure the difference they are making. And when I say that we've gone beyond what was mandated, we haven't simply compared our use of force incidents and strip searches against population census data. We've gone a step further and calculated the data in relation to the number of contacts various groups have actually had with the Toronto Police Service. In so doing, we can more accurately measure the outcomes that result from our reforms. Our goal is to focus our efforts on the systemic bias attributable to our actions, the actions we can control. We believe this is the most reliable path forward for us to measure the outcomes of the reforms we have identified together with our community, community advisory panel, and that this approach will ultimately benefit our communities who are experiencing systemic racism. When we commenced this work in 2020, our intention was to get it right and go beyond what was asked and to set the standard. 
I believe our, that our approach is accomplishing this. I have witnessed a careful, deliberate, and collaborat collaborative systems our race-based data team has developed and have confidence in their approach. Our work has been peer-reviewed and is supported by the opinions of two recognized experts in this field, Drs. Lauren Foster and Les Jacobs. Their independent report reviewing our approach was also released today. I encourage everyone to read that independent report, which states in part that <coughs> excuse me, the TPS RBDC strategy reflects the best practices for race data collection from a human rights perspective and is a model for other police services in Canada. As difficult as these findings are, we recognize that this is some of the most important work we have ever done. Getting to this point with our data has been challenging. We were committed to using the 2020 findings as a baseline to build upon actions that have already begun and will continue in the years ahead. <coughs> I want to thank and acknowledge the engagement and contribution of our community consultative groups including the Race-Based Data Community Advisory Panel, the Police and Community Engagement Review, also known as PACER, the Board's Anti-Racism Advisory Panel, and ABLE, the Association of Black Law Enforcers. You have held us to account, and we thank you for your candor and commitment to continue to help us address this multifaceted issue. It is critically important that you inform our work I am truly inspired by the commitment of our advisory bodies to working with the service in repairing and enhancing the community trust that is vital to community safety. <coughs> we would also like to recognize the renewed collaboration with the Ontario Human Rights Commission and their important and ongoing inquiry into systemic racism in policing in Toronto. The Ontario Human Rights Commission has been a key partner and its policies and reports have been one of the sources from which we have drawn in developing our actions for the way forward. We believe that our work and our findings, as presented here today, will assist us in continuing to work with the OHRC and with all communities to develop effective strategies that address the fact that bias and racism in society is impossible to deny, but must never be seen as inevitable or acceptable. Indeed, we must denounce it and eradicate it. Before I move on to address our next steps, I want to take a moment to address the members of the Toronto Police Service. <coughs> this data analysis speaks of systemic racism, not of individual acts of racism. Individual acts of racism of our, are, of course, misconduct and are dealt with as such whenever they rear their head. There is and will be no tolerance absolutely no tolerance. Racism has no place anywhere in society and it certainly has no place in policing. This data analysis demonstrates that we have not done enough as an organization to combat the systemic underpinnings that can then help you to do your work free of bias so as to instill trust in all the communities we are sworn to serve and protect. I want you to know that this is an organizational shortcoming and it does not speak to your actions as individual police officers and civilian members. 